I guess we're going to begin with a tame. And I found a level 120 Megalosaurus. Now, ever since I've got to Aberration, I've been checking out every level of every Megalosaurus I've come across, and that's the best I've seen so far. It's in a really poor spot, though. I don't really I want to tame it up here. I was just gathering some metal. I needed to get a vault. Well, actually, I want to get a couple of vaults set back up at the base. I'm running out of space, and I'm just storing stuff on dinosaurs. It's not good. So I figured we'd come out with our Anki and gather some metal. But I can't really turn this down. And it'd be better if it just somehow dropped off this bridge and just keep track of it. So I guess we'll begin by going for a tame. Now, there are two things that we really need to do to complete Aberration, or anybody needs to do when it comes to completing this map. One of them is trying to find an Alpha Basilisk because we need that to be able to fight Rockwell on the Alpha and the Alpha Basilisk Talon really is difficult to come by. And the second thing we need is we're going to need a Megalosaurus army. Now, of course, they're not that effective on the island map, but this being a giant cave, they're equivalent to the Rex. I'm not really too fussed about finding the saddle. I'm sure I'm going to find the saddle out on the surface. Just come out of the water. At least if I can drag it over to this edge, it'll be a little bit safer. Probably need to set up some sort of taming pen. Okay. It's got our attention. I don't want to hurt it. Okay. What's it doing? It's just stuck in the rocks. Uh, do I build something to tame it in? I could construct something just there. Be a bit safer. But I don't know. It looks like it's got brain worms. It's trying to run all over the place. Is it coming for me or it can't seem she can't seem to make up her mind she don't know what she's doing it's definitely not torpor running because I've only pumped a few darts into it now, here we go now it's attacking our anchor. I probably should I probably should have put Marky away um, oh, that's okay. Can I actually throw the Anki? He won't let me. Yeah, I can't. I can't throw my Anki away. I should have actually potted it up. It's just... Anki was carrying a lot of metal. And I didn't want to leave it behind, but... Ah... Uh, Marky22, I'm sorry, bud, but... You... Will be a worthy sacrifice. And don't worry, I have some backup copies of you. I think I only printed an anchor that we did. So I've got more in the fridge. Okay, well it's definitely torpor running now. It's not the best way to take one of these down, chasing it around. Oh, and there it is, it's out. Oh, that was a satisfying shot, that one. Okay. It's a beginning. And I am going to hunt around for a better level than that. Just take care of these crabs. And I do have more Ankies back at the base. Got 
somewhat distracted. I only come down here to get some metal. That should be fairly safe down here. Okay, probably won't take that much to tame. But that's our first Megalosaurus down. I'll just grab some charge while I'm here. Don't want to be hanging about and our light pet goes out. Just in case we spawn some nameless and... Yeah. If they end up hitting our tame, it'll knock the taming effectiveness down. Okay, let's just hang about for this. So Marquee 22, version 2. Don't worry, we had a backup copy. Essentially, we just lost out on a few levels. And we have enough metal. I should be able to do a couple of vaults and just expand on this base a little bit. So I'm going to put a little metal vault in just behind Shiny there in the corner as a drop off point. And just here, I'm going to set up a breeding area for what will be our Megalosauruses. So I'm probably going to spend a little bit of this week hunting around for some more of them. I at least need to get it started. But I'm just going to put some walls down and start the process of building this little breeding area. So as you can hear, I've got air conditioners all underneath this floor. And this is a trick that I've learned off Jaybird and Romeo, who are a couple of the complete crew members. It really does organize things a lot better, especially if you're in a tribe, just keeping track. So I'm going to build these walls three high. Then we're going to put all of the females, when we eventually get them, on the roof and allow their eggs just to drop down on the floor. Just want to keep everything tidy and out of the way. Something like that. Build a staircase going up the back side. Okay, so that's going to have to wait, but the basics are down and we still need to tame a male Megalosaurus yet. And uh, we still need to find a few more, but when we do and we eventually find our base pair, we've got something half ready to go. But now that it's 90% night time, 10% day, I want to head out onto the surface and do a little bit of loot hunting. Aberration is essentially a cave. In the lore of Ark, Santiago used a bomb to defeat the Overseer, destroying the protective dome and opening up the Ark to the effects of space. It's not like Genesis where there's no air or gravity, but by daytime the sun burns the surface. All three obelisks are still open on the surface, but the only way to reach them is when the sun goes down. Each obelisk in a sense is its own self-contained area. It's difficult to see the true colour of each obelisk now as they all give off a purple light. But for the sake of simplicity, let's call the top left one the green obelisk. It's the smallest area and the easiest to get out of when the sun starts to rise, but it doesn't have as many loot drops. It only has one entrance and exit, and it's a good starting point if you've never done surface looting on the aberration. In the top right, and we'll call this one the blue obelisk, it has an exit to the blue zone and the fertile zone, but it has less hiding spots, and I don't feel as confident when I'm down there on that zone. And last we have the red obelisk, and the entrance to this one from the fertile zone is just located behind the back of the old railway cave. It has lots of high ground, so I do prefer this one as it's easier to escape from reapers, and its loot area is quite large. A hazmat suit's not required on any of the surfaces, but if you do have to exit the surface here, then you will need a hazmat suit. With night time starting around 8pm, holding down H on PC will always tell you the time of day, and with night time starting around 8pm and ending after around 5am. But every three in-game days you'll have a different cycle. Depending on server settings, night time will pass at either 10, 50 or 90% quicker. I recommend only loot hunting on 90% nights or the ones that are 50-50 for a quick loot at the smaller green obelisk. 
Don't get caught out by starting your loot run on a full night cycle only for midnight to hit and to implement a change that makes time pass in minutes. Just be mindful of your time while you're up there. So I'm just out on the surface and we're in the bottom right hand corner and we're on a 90% night, 10% day cycle at the moment. So it's the best time to come out and have a look for loot. Now, I do like coming to this area and this obelisk in particular because of all of these tall peaks and around here we can easily escape if we need to get to the high ground and the reapers don't spawn up at the top here. Now I have spotted an alpha surface reaper back there so I need to come back and take that on. We'll bring a couple of spinos with us, sort of treat it like an alpha t-rex. Now there's something else that they got right on Aberration and that is fog. Look at the way it sits on this map, it doesn't just cover your screen like a filter. It actually has depth and it sits thicker at the bottom of the map but it really does make such a difference. And even though it's quite plain and basic out on the surface, it's quite nice in its own type of way. I suppose it does help having these light flies around helping light up stuff in the dark but fog is just something wildcard I haven't managed to get right only on aberration. And look over there at the back here at the portal. Whereas on the other maps the fog just sort of sits over the screen as a filter, this is much more effective. But hey. We'll come back next time with Del Boy and a couple of the other Spinos. We'll take out that Alpha Surface Reaper. Tonight unfortunately we've gone on to the 50-50 cycle, so it's 50% day and 50% night. And because of that, I don't like going out on the bigger two surfaces, but I recommend coming out to the smaller one, which is just behind Fertile Lake here. If you just come down from what was the original Survivor's main base, it's just along the back wall here. Now, if you're new to doing surface loot and you're just getting around to doing aberration for the first time, then I recommend the first surface you check out is this one here. It's just smaller. I always go over these trippy mushrooms just... Look. What kind of addict would need all these coconut husks and crushed honey to run? Would the presence of junkies account for all these uneaten french fries? These puddles of glazed ketchup on the bureau? Maybe so. Just basically points towards your exit. As you can see, straight in front of us. Now it is worthwhile coming out for surface loot, it is definitely a lot better, but you just need to be careful. Get rid of all the seekers that you can find. And one on one, as long as you've got your light pet on, He's not too bad at dealing with the Reapers now. Got 20k health on them. It'd be great if I could find at least just one saddle for my Drake. Be able to tank out here a lot better. Yeah, just be sure nothing's around because the second you step off, it's the second that you're vulnerable. Just grab what we can get straight back on. So as you can see this area is a lot smaller. The exit's just behind us here and the obelisk is straight in front of it so perhaps come here on the shorter days and nights or if you're just getting started it's a good place just to learn. It will just throw Del Boy out, 
take care of this. Now, I've killed plenty of Alpha Kakanos, so we've got lots of that trophy. It's just the other two we need to grab. And I didn't grab it, we'll just get it off Del Boy, otherwise I'll end up getting thrown on the ground. Just saw a toadstool there. Let's grab that. And we'll stick Del Boy away. So I think I've done as much looting as I can get. I'll probably save it all up in a vault and show you at the end of the week. Whatever we manage to get, we'll just keep on stacking it up. So there's another alpha just there, but I need to go and heal up before I take that one on. There's a plant just here. And I don't think it would be a bad idea if we start having a look around for some more Megalosaurus. Might head down deeper into the red area and just do a few circles there, see what we can see. Okay, what level are you? I think that's a Megalope. Let's see that Oh, 140! We will definitely have that. Um, I've actually been doing this for quite a while, actually. Uh, we've probably killed a good 50 or so. I'm um, just in the red zone, not far behind the hidden grotto area. I'm going to actually be taming a Reaper Queen eventually. And it's just a good area to wander up and down. And I didn't think I would see anything any good. I saw some really good colours because I've still got some event colours floating around the area I need to clear out. This one's just a normal aberrant one. But definitely I'm taking that. So we managed to get a 120 the other day. I think that was a female. Hopefully it doesn't fall down there because that's where all the pink stuff is. Should actually invest in making some shocking trank darts really. Oh, what are you doing Bryski? I can't shoot upside down. Just want to be careful because there's a pile over here just down there. That's it, you come to me. It's a little bit tricky shooting from the back of the Drake. And its head just gets in the way. Bryski, can you move? Oh, you move back. Okay, just get to the side slightly. But yeah, shocking trank darts, well, you can get the jellyfish. Just haven't taken the time to do so. I wasn't actually expecting to find anything. I was thinking about going into the other cave, the final cave that we need to do, and setting up a trap in there, because there's just hundreds of Megalosaurus in there, but... Hopefully this will do. I don't care about getting max levels. We just need to get something started. If I come across something better, we can change things around, throw something else in the pack, but right now, I just want to get started on breeding, so this will be a good find never actually take it out. Pretty skittish, they run everywhere. It's just going around in circles now. And it's down. Perfect. Now, I'm pretty sure i got a female, I'm not sure, but... If not, we'll just come and grab... Oh! See, pile over you. Everything wants to kill you down here. 
If they drag you off, they can damage your hazmat suit and before you know it, you're in trouble. So that will do. We've got a female and a male and it doesn't get much simpler than this really. I don't want any stats from the female. It wouldn't matter if it was a level 5. We're just going to use this one high level we've got. It's got a reasonable health and melee stat and all I want is a female with the father's stats on it. So we're going to keep on at this and eventually what we'll do is we'll breed all of the females back with the father and eventually we'll just end up with nothing but the base pair. pair a male and a female with both the same stats on it now if I come across something better I can swap it out but I don't need to overdo it to beat Rockwell I don't need to do prestige breeding and get 20 health mutations on one and 20 melee mutations on another that's just overpowered we just need what we need to get past Rockwell I'm just checking in it's been a little while since I've done an update and it's kind of be a little bit of a bitty episode but we've got a couple of males here that both have the same stats on they've got different colors but we'll go over that in a second I've also been looting we've managed to get a second vault and we've got a few good things off the surface we got the Alpha Reaper the other day I've got a shotgun it's not that great we did get some hazmat stuff and some flak armor which I'll no doubt need to switch to but you can pause it if you want to have a look at the sort of loot that we've got I suppose over the last week that we've been doing this and I'd say there is some good stuff in among it but we haven't got the Megalosaurus saddle or the best of shotgun blueprints yet so I need to keep at it now on the top here you can see that I've lined up all of the females and they've all got the same stats as the dad so Here's a couple of base males here. You can see we're looking at around 7,500 health and 430 on the melee damage. So these have no mutations, they're just all exactly the same. In spite of them having different colours, doesn't matter. All we are looking for is the same stats. So this is a trick that I learned like I say, off Jaybird and Romeo, who are members of the Complete Crew. It's the tribe that we play with, and as you can see, all the females here have got the same stats. Now, one thing you do want to make sure you do, is you want to take off Enable Victim Collection. You don't want that on, and you also want them to ignore all group whistles, because once you've got these dinosaurs up and out of the way, the last thing you want is to uh, accidentally do a J whistle around here and yeah once these are locked in they're just locked in out of the way and I can continue doing surface looting and all of that sort of stuff and this keeps it really organized I'm just going to remove the ceiling here and all of these females are just going to stay hovering and oops let's get rid of the rest of that it's off to a good start James well done now as you can see all of the females are just hanging up there what I want to do is I want to construct some more stairs above them and we're going to move this male so it sits above them and not below them but if we just turn on mating as you can see it can reach all of the females the eggs will just drop down and they'll automatically hatch because we've got all of the air conditioning but there we go as you can see we can reach them all there I'm going to build some stairs above this and put a roof above all of these Megalosaurus and eventually it's going to be a little production line okay just one more stairs here and there we go so we've got some stairs that we can take any new male with the mutations on we just replace it at the top of the stairs these females do not need to move anywhere so I'm back again and we've now managed to get everything sorted. I've managed to build something at the back here. It's kind of like a livable breeding area. I'm kind of happy with the way it's turned out. And 
if we just come up the stairs here, we can finally just switch our base male on. That can start breeding. Now, effectively, what we're doing here is we are only allowed to breed them once every 35 minutes, then it takes 45 minutes for them to lay an egg. We've now times that by 12. We've got a dozen of them up there, so 12 eggs every time are going to drop down. And each time we crack open the eggs, well, we'll be able to see if we've got any mutations, and this just keeps everything organised. I've still got my base males down here. Now here's one we've made earlier. This one's got a weight mutation. I could throw it up there, but inevitably it will lose its colour anyway because I'm going to keep stacking mutations. And like I say, we're not actually doing this for breeding colours into our dinos. We're doing this to beat Rockwell. And we just need an army that's powerful enough and I don't know, we'll just see what we're doing. At least this is all working. We can carry on looting the surface and doing other stuff and let this just work. Okay, so we've got uh, another batch here. So we have to claim them all. Uh, the one disadvantage to not having S plus is you don't have the euthanasia gun. We don't have Genesis 2, so we can't obviously crack the eggs, but we've got a mutation here. Um, Let's have a look. It is a female, so we need to breed it back with the male. And obviously get a female, but it's on melee damage, so we'll keep this one. We'll just put that mutation onto a male. And then we'll shove the male up the top. So now we're one melee mutation in. Now, what was I saying? On Scorched Earth, of course, you could just use the electric wyvern to wipe all of these unwanted babies out but yeah unfortunately we can't use Genesis 2's egg incubator so the best thing we can do is just lead them into the water behind us we'll go and drown them <laughs> Yeah, we're going to be doing lots of this ones. I've just left the one with the mutate mutation at the top. And these little guys can come for a swim. Go and sleep with the fishies. So we'll let these guys play with the piranhas. And of course we could have just left them up there. They wouldn't have had any food. You just don't bother cleaning them, they will die and you'll end up with a load of corpses around the breeding area there, but I figured we'd just tidy up the base a little bit. Now, of course, we've managed to get one melee mutation in on a female. I'm going to breed that back with the base male and we'll swap that base male around with the one that's on the top and we'll continue what we're doing. But now that it's started, at least we're building this little army in the background. And I'm not trying to do any prestige dino breathing here. We just want the bare minimum. We've got a half decent one. We're going to stack meaning mutations. We're going to stack health mutations on it. And hopefully we end up with a worthy army. But yeah, quite simply, we just need these same stats on a bale. So we breed that back with the base mail. When we've done that, we can replace it, chuck it on the roof. We may end up with all sort of colours doing this, and you can always save colours and breed them in at the end. I'm just going to change the name to female 1M. It's always handy to do this, as you can get lost on the family tree. Sometimes get confused where a mutation comes in, but that's a start. Our army is getting started. And that's about all the time we have this time round. I know it's going to be a little bit of a bitty episode. What with loot hunting and taming and setting this little breeding area up. But we're making progress. But until next time, I'm James from Complete Games. I'll see you.